keeping care of and handling juvenile justice employees who have been convicted of a crime can be trying and a big test at times for the jail system. And today, a former judge, Tracy Hunter, in Cincinnati, Ohio, was sentenced to six months county jail and dragged out of the courtroom. Hi, I'm Gary York, True Prison Stories. Please subscribe if you like this video. In just a moment, you're going to see a, about a one minute and 50 second video of a judge that was drug out of the courtroom after being sentenced to six months jail. Judge Tracy Hunter was convicted back in 2014 of illegally helping her brother keep his county job by mishandling a confidential document. Now, over the past four years of fighting this case, the former judge, Tracy Hunter, has had a lot of support from not only family members, but from the outside. And the mayor of the city also wrote a letter to the presiding judge asking him not to sentence her to prison. And the letter may have helped because the judge did not. He sentenced her to six months county jail. And you'll see in the video that the bailiffs have to take her into custody immediately as she uh, is drug out of the courtroom by a bailiff. She became uh, limp and drug um, and fell into the arms of a female bailiff who drags her out of the courtroom. And any time that we have to deal with a correctional officer or a former uh, road uh, deputy or law enforcement or a judge or a lawyer or anyone in the criminal justice system in the jail, it takes extra manpower extra time and there are policies and procedures that must be followed and they have to be isolated and kept separate from the inmate population for very good reason. In this case, Judge Tracy Hunter may have presided in her juvenile, juvenile court over one of the inmates in the jail now who could be a, an adult at this time and would remember her and there's all kinds of situations but we must keep them isolated and, and separate from the uh, main population. Here is the video. Take a look at the video. See what the bailiffs had to do to quell the disturbance and what a tough job it is when we have to take care of one of our own. And we'll talk some more right after the video. <laughs> As you can see, it was a very disturbing video. Nothing wrong with what the bailiffs did. And any of you that have worked for the Sheriff's Department in the jail or in the bailiff section know what's next. Uh, you're going to have to notify the jail that she's coming. You notify Bookin, of course, first that she's on the way. Special preparations will be done at Bookin to keep her separate and isolated from the rest of the inmate population in the bookend area and probably uh, we'll have to make this a speedy process for her. It would be the best thing to do. Speed up her process, get her booked in, get her dressed out and get her to the jail as soon as possible. And of course, advance notification to the jail and supervisors will be 
making their plans on the isolation cell that they're going to use for the judge. You have to look at several issues. How is her mental health status? The jail needs to know and bookend needs to know that she did collapse in the courtroom. They need to be aware of that. It's very important. They need to know that she's possible, possible risk for suicide. That needs to be checked out and she needs to be checked by medical staff and she needs to be questioned, make sure there's no suicidal issues. She needs to be probably put on watch until someone clears her of that watch, someone uh, who has the authority to do that. And there's a lot of things that go into this that the general public does not realize. The general public thinks, okay, uh, a deputy got thrown in jail, uh, uh, an officer got thrown in jail, an attorney got thrown in jail. They don't realize that there are special preparations made and a lot of things that have to be done. They cannot go into the general population, obviously, because if they were a correctional officer, they may have supervised some of these inmates in the past. If they were a road officer, they may have arrested some of these inmates that are in the jail. If they're a lawyer, they may have represented some of the inmates. And in this case, the judge may have had somewhere in her career contact with one of these inmates when they were a juvenile. So... I wanted to use this video, this unfortunate incident that occurred today, to kind of talk about the jail having to get prepared for these type of situations, and it's not just routine. And I would like to hear your thoughts on it, and thank you for watching, and please subscribe if you like this video.